They um, have this foundation called the Foundation of Goodness, which I founded uh, in 1999. And that was actually with the aim of bridging the gap um, between uh, the urban and the rural sector um, to empower disadvantaged communities, to try and uh, enrich their quality of life, to make them, you know, better progress, uh, you know, excel in life. Uh, they are really smart, uh, bright, and um, very uh, skillful. They never have a chance to get ahead in life because they don't have the opportunities and the background. So uh, my aim has been to try and, uh, you know, provide those opportunities to youngsters who come from, you know, very uh, remote areas. So that was how I started, um, you know, way back in 99. But before that, I was in my village. Uh, I went back there um, and uh, wanted to do something uh, when I really saw them not, uh, you know, having what they wanted uh, to make that progress. So. I started from the school um, and saw, you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of children not wearing shoes to school, bringing one book to write eight subjects, uh, not having a proper square meal. So I wanted to make that difference and uh, started on my own. But, uh, you know, people saw what I was doing, my friends, and uh, they kind of joined in me, uh, they believed in me and joined me. And uh, actually, uh, kindness kind of multiplied uh, enormously for me to start doing the other things, provide electricity to dispel darkness. Uh, as you know, you can just imagine what it is to live in a house that has no running water and uh, electricity. So um, then sanitation facilities, what not, children's welfare programs, uh, assisting the elderly, um, doing you know things for women who needed help. And then um, in 1999, you know, I really started the foundation so that I could set up a part of my uh, property into like a village community heartbeat model. And that had uh, English teaching, computer training, um, children's play park, uh, maternity clinic, and uh, for pregnant mothers who were actually walking four to five kilometers to get to a clinic, you know, I tried to, um, you know, facilitate their convenience. So um, this was like a great place, uh, the whole village just meeting up uh, there in the evening. Uh, they were having meetings, so uh, we were able to harness the skills of uh, children and youth, uh, get them into you know, more productive areas rather than waste their time uh, hanging around and getting involved in unwanted things. So uh, you know, that was really a superb start that I had. Uh, on that fateful day when everything was going smooth, um, just a tsunami struck uh, on the 26th of December 2004. I was having a scholarship program uh, in the village, uh, in, my com in my community centre. And then uh, at 9.33 in the morning there was a huge commotion and people were running inland saying the sea is coming, so I had no idea what that meant. And then I went uh, actually towards the road uh, where my gate is and then took a turn to the right and all I see, all I could see was water passing me uh, at a ferocious pace um, and then you know a tsunami had arrived but I didn't know of a tsunami at the time other than a tidal wave but so I had to take uh, the kids run through the back roads of the village uh, get up to you know uh, the temple uh, which is about 20 foot uh, high in elevation and uh, one kid died in the process because the waters were catching up. We were uh, in the temple premises and that was like 100 uh, funerals in one location. Uh, for example, the father would say I was carrying the son and the daughter and I had to let go of the son due to the force of the water. And uh, son would say I was carrying the father and the mother and I had to let go of the father again for the same reason and it was so horrific and uh, something that I would never forget. It was like the world coming to an end. And once uh, a village that I dreamt I wanted to make a rural community model was all shattered in ruin and debris and rubble and bodies all over and um, it was completely my dream that I had planted so firmly in my mind was gone in just a few minutes. But then again, you know, adversity brings uh, so much prosperity if you know how to harness the um, opportunities. So I think the waves of compassion um, that flowed uh, actually um, overpowered the waves of destruction and in short, although it was a huge, huge daunting task 
to try and get everything back on track, build it back better, having gifted my villa back uh, to the cause of the Foundation of Goodness. Um, I was really pleased that today, after five years, we have a, a project that caters to about 25,000 beneficiaries from over 25 to 38 neighborhood communities um, via 30 sectors and services, free of cost, and the waves of success stories are unimaginable. The plans now are actually to try and sustain this model. Um, it's worked very well for four years. Uh, it's something tangible that we can show all the tsunami donors in the world who, uh, whose monies have been put to good use. They can be very proud that they contributed, which is making a huge impact. Uh, I mean, 25,000 beneficiaries a year uh, out of the you know, funding where we were able to inf actually improve the infrastructure of a village. And when you create something good, you know, uh, it has a way of uh, multiplying and uh, yeah, I mean goodness is the only investment that never fails and uh, I'm so glad that the Foundation of Goodness is able to take this uh, into other areas and uh, I'm planning to try and replicate this model in the north of Sri Lanka where we have had an internal strife for 28 years and now that is all in the past. So looking ahead, doing the best you can and staying positive, we have designed and replicated the model. We are actually very ambitious uh, about getting this uh, up and running. Uh, it's probably the hardest ever dream, um, biggest challenge to get there and create the North Learning and Empowerment Institute for again maybe 20,000 plus to benefit and uh, that to me is I think the most critically needed uh, at this time and I'm working very hard campaigning and showcasing. It's not that uh, we are projecting something we want to do. We've already built uh, and established credibility down in the South, having done the same model. People may doubt what we say, but they will believe in what we have done. So on that premise, you know, we think uh, we can really make a difference again to enrich humanity. And at the end of the day, you know, it all matters how you have helped others uh, when life comes to an end. Yeah. Bran Adams. The famous pop star, he gave a, a 25 meter six lane pool when I was building a swimming pool. And then, you know, we've already got uh, a girl who's won the six mile sea, sea swim championship for two consecutive years. And, uh, you know, she's back to back and she's now in the Sri Lankan squad. There are other swimmers who are knocking at the door in terms of nationals. Uh, so is the uh, case with uh, cricket. Uh, cricket um, is the religion in Sri Lanka by way of a sport. Uh, I've already taken an under-15 you know, uh, team uh, internationally to Malaysia um, and you know, mind you they were coming uh, to Colombo for the, uh, half of them were coming to Colombo for the first time. Uh, all of them were traveling in the plane for the first time, staying in a, a hotel for the first time. And um, finally I'm so pleased to announce that uh, amidst 22 teams, of which eight teams were overseas, we won the championship. You know, other success stories from the academic side where, you know, we've, by giving um, opportunity for them to, you know, train in computers that uh, you sent, uh, you know, from Walt Disney, from Ringling College, uh, by being exposed to those computers, they have become graphic design specialists. Um, they've done wonders, they do web design. So it's all happening there, you know, and uh, it's, it's amazing to see. We are very keen that we create a real balance between success and having happiness as well at the same time. That's the key to teach them good values because unless you, are, you demonstrate um, f uh, the foundation of goodness uh, philosophy of being good and kind and um, being disciplined and you know, nice to people and have a great attitude, and uh, always forgiving and you know uh, helping others so uh, generosity you know and boundless love are those qualities that actually can make you uh, um, a fine human being with the ideal balance rather than being you know uh, entangled only in the chase for success uh, in the western world the the kids can start to uh, share whatever they have in excess i mean i'm sure if you go to their rooms they have plenty of things that are piled up for years on end and they can take that and send it across to you know street uh, children or you know uh, soup kitchens or I don't know where I, you know here but in back in countries where it's like the third world you can actually give it to orphanages you can go back and give it to villagers you can pick up so many children I mean there are children who will never see some of those items 
for their entire life. And uh, you know, we have sometimes when you open a wardrobe uh, of a very influential kid, you know, you have so many clothes that have not been worn for a while. And you know, you can take at least two or three, learn to share, learn to cultivate the habit of gifting uh, at a very early life, at a very early age is, is crucial because being considerate, caring, and uh, giving uh, are very important qualities. It is about doing good, being good, kind, nice, and um, I can only say have a heart that never hardens and a touch that never hurts and uh, probably a temper that never fires. Uh, I think um, I always had a vision um, that I wanted to create a, a rural community model because of the fact that I saw the, the gap was far too wide uh, between the urban and the rural sector. So I created my own thoughts, you know, I dreamt of what I was going to do. I, I had a plan, you know, it's all about uh, planning your work and working your plan. And um, I was dreaming, I think, more when I was awake than rather sleeping. So um, I think uh, when you dream big and passionately at that and especially wanting to help with no other agendas, uh, no expectations, um, you know, um, you wanted to be, you know, uh, purely human uh, with good, good intentions of uh, great purity and noble at that. So um, when all those good qualities come together and, you know, you create something in your model, in your, in your mind, your mindset is uh, knowing uh, the design and, and the plan that you have already. So it's a case of uh, translating that into action. If your intentions are to enrich the quality of life of those who are in desperate circumstances, that adds more value to it. So it has very mysterious divine ways of, you know, coming to your rescue. So, you know, you, you carry on uh, the project as the architect and, uh, you know, the whole world rallied around us to make that happen. and. Uh, you know, I think people who are creative, you know, especially coming from a college of your background, like Ringling, you know, you can, everyone is an, like an artist. So they are always thinking ahead, thinking differently, you know, and um, they can make so many things happen. It's about wanting to make things happen. It's about um, walking the talk. It's not only about just planning. You know, you to go there and get things done. And when you do things, you know, it has that uh, great effect that it's going to somehow roll over and make things happen. So um, being creative, I think, is a hugely uh, advantageous, uh, you know, quality that a human being can possess. You have to be sensitive to others' uh, needs. You know, in, in the whole world, um, there are many people suffering out there you know, we need to go and do something. We are going to the moon, we are going to other planets, and we are exploring all those areas when we have so many problems in our own planet. But it's a reality, you know, it's the way I think we can, you know, look at every penny to give equal opportunities. We are, right, we are fighting for equal rights, isn't it? You know, we are fighting for, you know, human rights. So where, why don't we think about you know, dispelling darkness for all the houses that are in this whole world to bring in light. The other day I gave, uh, you know, electricity to a, a lady who was 78 years of age. She had to wait 78 years to get four bulbs into her house for $100, you know, and she was crying. So, you know, where's the equality? We have, we've got to think, you know, and make a difference in this world. You know, you've got to believe in yourself and say that, uh, the ten most powerful two-letter words. If it is to be, it is up to me, you know. And then uh, you keep going, and uh, you know, especially if you want to help others, you know. And um, you have to have a good heart. You know, your heart um, has to be pretty neat, and uh, you know, one that is very soft and uh, kind and nice and good to uh, look at other people's, uh, you know, miseries uh, and alleviate them. Uh, because it's all about, you know, uh, rejoicing about other people's happiness as well and not only yours.